today I'm going to show how I make rugs like this out of old socks and t-shirts. So the most challenging part about this craft is that you need a loom. And in this case, I made my loom out of an old uh, frame that I got in the trash. And this particular frame is, um, let's see, the inside section is 22 inches by 30 inches. It doesn't have to be that big or that small. It could be a little bit bigger or smaller, um, but that is the maximum size of rug that I can make with this uh, particular loom. And so um, when I found this in the trash, uh, the first thing I did was I sanded it smooth so there would be no chance of splinters. And then um, we put these little brackets in the four corners to reinforce it because I think that's probably why it was being thrown out is that it was a little bit shaky and it had a few dings in it. And then um, we put screws every half inch um, and right here across there's 37 screws it was just however many I could fit uh, and we put it at the top and, and the bottom of the frame and so that allows me to make a rug this big if you want to make bigger rugs you need to find a bigger frame or of course you could just get two by fours and you know make a big rectangle that way as well but I'm not much of a woodworker and I like to recycle so making it out of an art frame was a great option for me To make this rug, you need socks with holes in them, a whole bunch of them, and you need uh, t-shirts. And in this case, I'm not going to use the whole t-shirt. I'm using mainly the collars uh, and the cuffs and the waistbands. And that's because, as you know, if you follow Trash Imagination, I make fluffy rugs and I use most of the t-shirt in the production of those fluffy rugs. But when I was done making my fluffy rugs, I was left with these collars and waistbands and such. So that's when I came up with the idea for this rug. So um, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to prepare the waistbands uh, so that you can use it to make the warp of the loom. So you could take a rotary cutter and you could you know try to trim it up but I found sometimes well often the rotary cutter would mess it up. So I just use my scissors and cut along as close to the seam as possible. Here's a close-up showing how I cut them. So once I have the waistband, you, it doesn't look like it's going to stretch. But actually, when you take a waistband off of a t-shirt and you pull really hard, you hear all those <laughs> threads cracking that is it's stretching um, and so to put it on the loom I just wrap it around the first screw and bring it out to the screw and voila it's just the right length um, now I think I mentioned I have about 36 screws on here so I like to alternate colors just to make it easier during the weaving process so in this case I've collected 18 waistbands that are black and 18 that are other colors um, so I'm just going to alternate putting them on the loom and it's a very fast process. Now you might be thinking, I don't have access to 36 t-shirts and I don't really want to recycle 36 t-shirts of waistbands. That's okay. You could just use t-shirt yarn or regular yarn or really anything that stretches across um, the screws. So now the warp is on the loom so we can start weaving and uh, the way I start connecting these loops that are the collars or the cuffs or the bits of sock which I'll show you in a bit is uh, the same thing over and over again. I um, put them over each other like that and then grab one and pull it through. <laughs> okay uh, we'll do that again Let's do it. so you can Lay them down so they're kind of like a Venn diagram. Grab it and pull it through. And you just pull it nice and tight and you can pull like that until you hear that nice cracking sound of whatever letting go. So 
um, that is now more than a row's worth of weaving. So um, to get started, I just leave a little bit um, sticking out. I'm gonna tie it off at the end. Um, and so the nice thing about alternating black and other colors is that I know if I just pick up whatever, like with my hand like this, then I know that I'm picking up alternate. So there's my colorful one, colorful one. And I am picking up both, uh, you know, it's, it's a double, there's two pieces of fabric here, but I'm picking up both of them. You could do it, you know, every single one if you want, but the point of this rug is to make it quickly to recycle these materials and to make a functional rug as quickly as possible. So I've got my first row, uh, the weaving done, got a little bit sticking out here. Um, yeah. And um, so if I tried to go back, I would only get halfway across. So I need to add more to this. So again, I, I just grab, make that little Venn diagram, pull it through. And this on the way back, I'm gonna only pick up the black ones. So black, back, like that. And what makes this nice is it, it becomes very brainless and relaxing and meditative. Now you'll see here, I actually leave quite a bit. I don't pull it tight against this um, particular piece of the warp. It's okay. Um, if you pull it tight, you're going to find that you're, you don't get a rectangular rug in the end. So it's better to leave, like you can see I've left even like an inch worth of a loop sticking up there. and. Um, that gives you the flexibility later to um, play around with the tension of your rug and make sure it's nice and rectangular. And you can see I'm also doing this thing where I kind of pull with my fingers to get the two rows nice and tight with each other. Pick up the blacks, black, 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 like that. And again, that little motion of squeezing these rows together. So now we have the first two rows of our rug done and actually this is a little bit tight here so I might add a loop and just add a loop um, so that I have a little bit more give. There we go. And at this point I could even just tie this here just so that loop doesn't get lost. Um, this is like really not a fancy situation. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going like this, um, alternating all the way until my rug is um, finished being made. So next I'm going to show how I start incorporating socks. Um, so to use the socks, I have to cut them into loops. Um, so I just take my scissors and I cut them into a loop. There's a loop. Woo! And the only challenge with socks is they do tend to shed more. The t-shirts don't shed. So that's just a, a consideration. If you're really worried about a, a rug that might shed a little bit of uh, fiber, uh, then don't use socks. But I use these as welcome mats outside and in that case, I feel like it's okay. So I would just keep cutting up this rug, uh, this sock, get another loop, another loop, and hook it on the exact same way that I hooked on the uh, t-shirt loops and then if you have like an, a long sock like this again it, it's pretty and these loops are, of course are much smaller than the t-shirt collars and the t-shirt cuffs and stuff uh, but in the end you can't really tell because once it's all woven in socks and collars they all look sort of the same in the end but let's take a moment to talk here about color so uh, most of the socks in my family are gray, white, black, beige, navy, and you could make a rug in just those colors. You totally could. In fact, the rug that's currently at our front door right now is all black and gray socks because that's the most common 
uh, socks in our family. Um, but I think like if you look at the example rugs I have here, what makes them pop is having that little bit of orange, lime green, yellow, things like that. So um, what I'm saying to you is don't use all your colorful things in a row. So alternate between colorful, in this case tie-dyed uh, t-shirt collars with really boring gray socks. And so then in the end, the final rug will be this wonderful mix so that you get to use up both your less exciting, uh, more neutral colors, along with the pops of color that you get from tie-dye and other bright colored t-shirts. Now let's talk about how to cut the heel of the sock. Well, first of all, often that's where the hole is. And so, um, Often what I'm doing is I'm just going to cut the heel off like this because this is not a loop and this isn't, you know, it's not possible to weave that. But now I have a sock that is a series of loops again, so I can just keep going like that. So generally the heels and the toes, I'm not weaving those. Heels and toes, I'm not weaving those. So again, there's a little... Boop, boop, boop. And probably soon enough, I will come up with a project for those and I'll share that with you in the future. Um, so the main things to remember as you're weaving is to leave that extra bit on the edges on both sides so that your rug doesn't start squeezing down towards the middle. And then the other thing is like socks tend to compress more than collars. So if you see your line of weaving is starting to look like hilly, um, what you do is you come into the sections that are a little bit higher and just use your fingers to pull down that section and make it a little bit tighter because there's, I mean, a lot of room for compressing um, the, the fabric. So when you get to this point and there's only a few inches left on the loom, the challenge is it's getting more and more difficult to weave because the warp is now under a lot of tension. All of the extra bit of flexibility has been taken up by the, the weft, this part that goes side to side. So at this point, it's hard to uh, like pick up a whole, like more than two at a time, for example. And at some point you might even actually just be picking up one warp at a time. And, and so it starts getting harder to push it down, harder to weave. Now, I like to try to weave as close as I can uh, to this point because I'm going to, uh, I want the edges to be these loops. I don't want to cut it off here, for example. Um, but the good news is that even if I only get up to about here, uh, I'm going to use those loops to tie off and also at the bottom here there wasn't much space so I can even like squish it all up a little bit more in this direction. Um, but I just wanted to warn you that this last couple of inches of weaving is the most intense challenging uh, in terms of trying to get that uh, weft in and out. So I purposefully made this uh, warp have an even number of items. There's 36 and that's because I'm gonna tie them two to each other um, as I go. So what I do is I just pull off two loops and I just tie a square nut right over left and under, left over right and under. And that is, a, if you were a scout or a girl guide, that's, that's a knot that you should know. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so now I repeated tying all the knots on this side and we have a finished rug. Woohoo! So just to illustrate, the this is, you know, you can see how big the rug is going to be. It's going to be just a few inches smaller than whatever your frame is. So that's why when you're choosing what type of frame to use for your loom, that's, you know, choose it based on the size of rug that you want as the finished product. So that's my project. Uh, that's how I creatively reuse the uh, collars of shirts and socks that are no longer working for my family to make these fun rag rugs. And it took me, I would say about three hours to make this today. And uh, obviously you don't have to do it all in one day. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a very thick rug. It's got some lumps and bumps, um, but I think that makes it fun and definitely has a cool texture for your feet. So I hope you are inspired to creatively reuse uh, your t-shirts and your socks and I look forward to hearing your comments about this video.